Today we're going to make cyanotypes and let me show you what I have here. I have a Japanese brush that has no metal. It uses fishing line to tie it together. I have some high quality paper from Photographer's Formulary. I have two brown bottles and one has potassium ferrocyanide and the other has ferric ammonia citrate. So this is the classic cyanotype process. A couple beakers. This is a 25 milliliter long beaker so that I can measure very accurately. I have an eyedropper here so I can take the fluid out and be very accurate about it. You don't need to mix very much at a time and it doesn't take very much solution to make an emulsion. You add them one to one so I will mix five milliliters of one and five millimeters of the other or ten and ten and so on. Remember when measuring chemicals that you should always measure from the bottom of the curve to find out exactly where five milliliters is. Should be the same technique they taught you in chemistry class. Okay, so I've cleaned the pipette and I've cleaned the small beaker. I've added five milliliters of potassium ferrocyanide. Now I'm going to add five milliliters of ferric ammonia citrate. We now have a light sensitive emulsion. Again, when you're making the emulsion, you should use subdued light, and fluorescent lights are a source of a small amount of ultraviolet light. So, for best results, either have fluorescent lights in an adjoining room or have them not on at all. To sensitize a piece of cyanotype paper, I'm using the high quality cranes cover stock here. I'm going to load up the brush and unload it on the side of the beaker and very gently paint it in delicate vertical strokes followed by delicate horizontal strokes. The purpose of this is to evenly distribute the emulsion across the expected image area. Once the emulsion is evenly soaked in, you can take your paper and hang it up to dry in the darkroom. Or you can use a hair dryer to expedite the process. Recently, I was able to take pictures of my sister using the 8x10 camera. Um, this is the product from the 8x10 camera, my negative, and using this negative, we'll be able to make a contact print using a cyanotype. The size of your negative will be the contact print. I'm evenly spreading out the emulsion on the paper. It's a good gentle stroke. And depending on what you want the sides to look like, you can add different strokes onto the side to give it a little bit more of an effect. So you want to have the light brush stroke to show at the edge of your picture? Yes, to give it more of a modern look. Once it appears to be evenly distributed through the paper, the next process is the drying process, which I will use a hairdryer. Now that the emulsion is completely dry, I now can place my negative on the paper itself. Placing your negative exactly where you want it, we use three pieces of tape to put on the top of our negative. 
and make sure to only tape the edge a tiny bit and not overlap with the actual negative itself, like so. Three pieces should be perfect. Now the reason we want to do this is so that way we can check halfway through and see if it's been exposed long enough. Okay, so this is our ultraviolet light source. You can use the sun or you can use uh, an artificial source like this. This one is specifically designed for cyanotypes or platinum printing or other alternative processes. So we'll take this and put it in, latch it down. The light coming from here is dangerous and so uh, people shouldn't stare at it and obviously you don't want to turn it on without the cover on. Okay, it's been uh, exposing for five or ten minutes now and we can inspect it to see what it looks like. Because we tape the edges, we can move the negative without losing registration. And here's what we have so far. What you see is a slightly blue-green image and parts of the image are starting to look like a negative. That means we've reached the right exposure. So what we're going to do now is take it into the darkroom and rinse it just in plain water until we get rid of all the unused residue. Okay, so on this image, there's actually a lot of unused emulsion. And to make this into a real print, we rinse all that off, and then once it's rinsed off, it's no longer light sensitive, and the image will be stable. blue color in the water or the blue color dripping off the edge of your print is an indication that it needs to rinse a little bit more.